I'm super excited to share with you some exciting plans for the uh, Highlands campus. And I know a lot of you probably have heard about it, but don't really understand or you can't visualize it. So has anyone been there yet? A couple of you? Excellent. Um, so my name is Daniela Shebitz, and I am the executive director of the School of Environmental and Sustainability Sciences. And at on the main campus here, we have been actively teaching environmental science and environmental biology and uh, geoscience and earth science for a very long time. Um, and as you can imagine from your own classes, uh, a lot of our students come from very urban environments. And so they don't really understand how intricately linked uh, nature and environmental health is with human health. And so uh, it's hard to describe in a lot of our classes to these students about, well, you know, really human health is really based on clean air and biodiversity and sort of this interrelacing of all these species when they can't really understand, when they, when oftentimes they don't leave Union or Union County. And so uh, a lot of our classes have been through uh, field trips. Right, so we take, we load up the vans, the 10 passenger vans, and we drive to places like the Pine Barrens or like the Highlands, and we show students how, um, how intact nature is in a lot of uh, New Jersey. So there's a reason it's called the Garden State, and it's not just because of all of the farms, but there's a lot of green areas in our state. Um, and so we have been very fortunate at Kane to now have a part of our state that's really pristine as part of our living classroom. And it's not just for environmental sciences by any stretch of the imagination, it's for all of us. And so um, what I would like to do today is to present you with just an introduction to what it is that we will be doing there. And then also, um, while this is the most intimidating space I think I've ever given a speech, um, I also want it to be a little bit more intimate. So I would like for you guys to have, a, to have some time to have a conversation about how can we make it more so it's, a, it's everybody's campus there. So um, therefore, we're going to be talking about a lot of opportunities for collaboration at this Highlands campus. So here in Union, New Jersey, we are in the most densely populated part of our most densely populated state in the country. But about an hour away, um, there's a small place called Oak Ridge. This is close to Jefferson and Sparta, um, right off of 15. So um, it's beautiful over there. I'm sure some of you guys commute from there, right? It doesn't make you sad every day, right? Uh, yeah, this is, so this is the most beautiful, most gorgeous area, in my very biased opinion. Um, and it's a, it, there's a tiny road called Mount Paul Road. And this tiny road leads up a very steep sort of hill to uh, what used to be a monastery. And so when you get there, you also see this beautiful lake. So this is a lake that's on the land. And if you look, oops, hold on. Mm, I don't know if they, oh, let's see. Nope, that might not work. But there's a little monastery across the lake over there. So this is taken on the opposite side of the lake. And um, that monastery was active until, um, well, a little while ago. And then the state acquired it. And the state um, put it out to Kane and said, well, we, we would uh, sign a lease agreement with you if, um, if you could use this as a field station, as an environmental place, but also as a, sort of like a place for education for students. So, there is countless opportunities for education. Um, we've been teaching there for a while, but we've also been exploring. So these pictures were taken just a couple weeks ago when some of the faculty from our department went out there um, to kind of see what the spring was like over there. And um, you can see us kind of walking through, and a lot of the area here is forested. There are snakes, believe it. You're really kind of like wandering through. There's also black bear there, um, which we've heard and actually appear sometimes in the garbage, so that's going to be interesting. There are some gorgeous wildflowers, so that's a lady slipper. We came right when the orchids were blooming, and oh, it was just a magic. I'm a plant ecologist, so this was magical for me. Um, really like trickling brooks, it's just absolutely stunning. Um, great biodiversity there as well. It's great places to teach geology, as you can imagine, and also ecology. Um, and so this is an active beaver den that's there, and um, we, there's a lot of fun um, mammal tracks and things that we could explore there as well. 
So what have we done there already? Well, um, we acquired the lease to this property in 2015, and that was an agreement between the state and the, the DEP and Kane. So this area is in the Highlands region of New Jersey, which is very, re very strictly regulated in terms of um, environmental impact. And the High Highlands uh, Commission is made up of people who really have um, first and foremost in their mind is making sure that the environment of the highlands is not impacted negatively. So there are very strict regulations in terms of what we could do on this property. So for example, we can't expand that, that driveway. Um, we can't put down any, a, a lot more in, uh, impervious surface or surface that doesn't let the rainwater seep through. So it's very strictly regulated. And part of the reason why we're excited about that environmentally is because of that very factor. Um, is the fact that we will continue to see this as an active um, environment that's intact. It's 41 acres and it's of land, and it's surrounded by um, about 1,000 acres of, of protected land. So you could walk in any direction along these trails that are already established and in place. Um, and they're beautiful trails. They go up the mountains, or they go along, around the lake, or th along brooks. And so it's, it's really countless opportunities there for that, for exploration. Uh, we were awarded a grant by the by New Jersey. King University was a, uh, awarded a grant by New Jersey for the renovation and um, for instrumentation, uh, scientific instrumentation to be supplied to this area. So for the past few years, this has been sort of developing the plans with the architecture department here at Kane, who came up with plans of how to create this, how to transform this monastery into something that would be a terrific learning experience for our students, um, a great place to do research, and also recognizing the importance of the minimum impact on the environment. And so um, while the architecture department was working with architects, and while, uh, while we were kind of, well, that was all going on, uh, in the School of Environmental and uh, Sustainability Sciences, we were teaching there out of a trailer. Um, and so we were able to take our classes up there and really use the land as our classroom. So um, we've taught there classes like field biology and uh, Chip Cadella taught entomology and biodiversity assessment, and we've taught uh, conservation bio there as well. So uh, again, even though we didn't have access to the monastery, to the old building, we were able to use the lands. Uh, we've also held a number of workshops there. So uh, one was through the Asbury Park um, High School. So we were taking students from Asbury Park to the Highlands so that they could really get an immersive experience in, um, in nature exploration. Uh, we also took students from China uh, over there and did a comparison. We had a, an amazing Quality First Initiative grant to take students from China, from WKU to Costa Rica to explore the rainforest, to the highlands to explore a temperate forest. And similarly, we were able to take our students over there as well. So a really great immersive experience for them as well. And teacher workshops. Our big thing is making sure that teachers are recognizing Kane University as an ideal location for students who are interested in environmental sciences to pursue their college education, um, which is hard to convince them of when we're just locked in union. But at the Highlands, there's a whole world of, of opportunities. So construction was underway, and we have not been in that area for, oh, I don't know, maybe two years um, or a year and a half until this summer when we were able to tour it again. So this is the old monastery, and this is exactly how it looks right now. Um, it was, again, it was set up with, door, with residents halls or dorms for the, for the monks to live. Um, and at the same time, it had a number of meeting rooms uh, and a beautiful church. Uh, and except, oh, we'll get there in a second. Um, and, uh, but there was no ADA accessibility. Um, and, they were, and they were not really up to code with their fire suppression either. So the first thing was to make sure that it was ADA accessible um, and also to bring it up to fire code. And then to renovate it so that it would be ideal for our classes. So, we're calling this the lodge, um, and the lodge is going to have 249 seats for students, over nine classrooms, and 24 dorms. Uh, and they're going to, again, have single dorms or double dorms in these areas. So this is, these pictures were taken two weeks ago. So this is the current status of the facility. Uh, we, uh, because it's going to be a science facility as well, we're going to have a wet lab. Um, which means that it will have sinks. Um, and so that's the wet lab there with a gorgeous window overlooking the lake. Um, and then 
downstairs in the basement, you also have a gym. Um, and this is what was used by the monks and also could be converted into a classroom as well as a rec center. There are seven classrooms and two labs in the lodge. So one is a wet lab, one is a dry lab. Um, and so you see, you see, I believe that's the dry lab there in the classroom there. Um, and the idea is that these will be used to teach a lot of our um, bench science classes uh, that, again, would be also taught here. So we'll, we'll go into the curriculum in just a second. This was the chapel, and the saddest thing is that um, they didn't want to be distracted during prayer, and so that glass wall was actually covered with brick, um, and so you weren't able to see the beautiful, beautiful view that was just outside. So they actually opened it up. It's gorgeous now, um, as you can imagine. That's all just kind of overlooking the lake um, and will be a very distracting place to try to teach. But it also could be used for any different, it's going to be set up as a multi-purpose room with um, seating capacity for 56 people. So here's the architectural sketch of the area. And so you'll see the big glass, right? So that's the lodge with the big glass wall. Um, and amazingly, uh, it's connected to a cabin that's going to be up there. But it's connected through a, a canopy walk, right? This is so amazing so it goes over the trees as you could kind of visualize there into something called a tree house i'm going to try one more again okay so uh, i'm going to wander around okay so that's the tree house over there and then the cabin's up there and all of that walk is over the trees um and so aesthetically you can imagine how gorgeous this is going to be but scientifically it's also awesome because we could set up uh, carbon dioxide flux meters so we could see how much carbon is going into the forest and how much is being um, released and so ecologically it's awesome you could see the birds in the top of the trees you could see carbon you could but also aesthetically it's going to be phenomenal as well the cabin at the edge over there is going to consist of three levels. Um, and each of those is going to have about two classrooms uh, that could convert into a single large classroom or an event space as well. And so the total classroom and lab seats there for the cabin is 133. They have not begun construction on that part yet, though. This is, uh, again, the canopy walk. And you could see the tree house right there in the middle. And that is what was taken two weeks ago. So the tree house is actually under construction and almost done, um, believe it or not. So it's not like a tree house with four walls. It's more like stadium seating in a way. So you could give outdoor lectures there. Um, and it will have 79 seats for students. So uh, the idea is that you could teach during the day or even at night, which is really kind of cool, because there's a projector that will project into the night sky, as you can see in this depiction, right? I mean, come on, that is just beautiful. Who doesn't want to teach at night now? Um, and then this is a picture of a rendering of what the, the canopy walk will look like, sort of looking over the trees, as we were saying. So the academic plan, um, well, first questions about, do you guys have any questions yet? This doesn't have to be all. Yeah, go for it. Great question. No idea. I'll get back to you on that. Does anyone know in the audience? I'm going to take a guess and say it's maybe a third of a mile. Okay, yeah, it's not a third of a mile, maybe. Yeah. That's about 70, that's 79 people. Yeah. And they're not inside, they're just sitting outside, right? So it's, again, it's kind of like just for an outdoor class or discussion or something. Yes, that's total all classrooms together. So that means as, as a maximum between the lodge and the cabins, we're looking at no more than 500 people um, for, for the, at, at a time, at any one time for this entire facility. Yeah. What's that? Bike riding. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So um, the long walkway or the long driveway would be great for bike riding. Um, yes. Yeah. It's so beautiful there. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Denny. Yeah. It's all, it's all state park. Yeah. It's all state park. Which lends itself to 
some challenges too. Sorry, I'll go back on here. It, so it's surrounded by state park land, um, which lends itself to challenges, it's especially associated with hunting. Um, and so we're going to have to work very closely with uh, to make sure that our borders are marked clearly. Um, and so that's kind of and also trail use as well. So we're going to be working closely on that. You have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's park, right? And and this area was very um, heavily used by the local population for fishing, for hiking, for exploring, and so um, so they'll be able to continue to access it by foot as well. Okay, I'm going to keep going with the academics. Yeah. Oh yeah, please. So, so here is the plan, um, and this is where we're kind of, uh, uh, this is exciting, but also a little bit scary, right? So we have, um, there are, we're looking at it to be sort of like the ocean model, Ocean County College model, except the difference is that there's no community college on campus here. But we're looking at it as an opportunity to, um, to articulate with four of the community colleges in that region and offer continue the, the third and fourth year classes for students who are graduating with their associate's degree from those community colleges. And this would allow students to live at home or, again, bless you, or to have, um, or, or at least to be very close by because in the northwestern part of New Jersey, there, there is really no other college in that area. Um, at a state college. And so really it comes down to how can we provide an education to those students without them having to drive all the way to Union. Um, and so the plan is this, and it's open to discussion. Um, and so our plan is that we will be starting to teach classes there this fall, um, just two classes, and they're mostly outdoor classes. So they're not really going to need, because Again, you just saw those pictures. This is clearly a construction site. And so we're flexible at that as well. The classes that we are hoping to at least offer a part of are field biology and conservation biology, which are classes that have been taught there already outside. And so even if it just means getting the students familiar with the site again by taking them there for a couple of times, we could do that. Or if the building has full access by the fall, we will hopefully be able to teach them uh, out of the Highlands campus. Eventually, by 2019, that fall, we're hoping for our entire programs of environmental science and environmental biology to have their continuing third and fourth year classes being offered there. Also, biology as a, a BA, a Bachelor of Arts, could also be offered out of those, that facility too. Some of, the classes, some of the majors that we were looking at rolling out there are the majors that have a, a high level of courses online or could be taught hybrid. And those are criminal justice and also psychology um, in the sense that these are, class, these are majors where students can come to the Highlands campus if, to take uh, classes with a professor 
or take a lot of the classes online as well. Um, management will offer a little bit more difficult challenges because of their accreditation issues and they're already on four campuses. So we're going to hopefully roll out to management in the future, but that's based on um, their accreditation limitations. And if there are other programs that would like to be offered out of the Highlands, perhaps you or your faculty live near there, um, you should please let us know because we are open to discussing all of the different options that we will have for third and fourth year students. Now, just to kind of give you a little bit of a lay of the land, like I said, there's no Ocean County campus right there. And so that's a little bit of a challenge. But there are four community colleges that are within an hour. Um, Sussex County Community College is 33 miles away, without traffic, by the way. Uh, County College of Morris is 39 minutes. Passaic County Community College is about 30 minutes. And Warren County College is about an hour and 10 minutes. So all of these, we believe, would be good feeder schools for our program, in the sense that we could do the degree completion program for those students there okay the other thing is that we're very close to um, Jefferson High School and so we've been working with Jefferson High School a bit too um, and one of the things that we're really excited about is offering su uh, summer programs for college credit uh, so that if the students who are in high school want to start with their environmental science classes like introduction to environmental research we could g offer them an immersive experience um, over the summer for three credits uh, towards college. And hopefully that would be used as a recruiting tool as well. So again, just in fall 2018, we'll be teaching a couple of classes. Another thing is that we'd like to have a guidance counselor workshop held up there so that we could bring in guidance counselors from around that area so that they're familiar with the facility um, and also familiar with the programs that are gonna be offered there for, their, for high school and also with uh, community college partnerships there as well. And we are going to be beginning some long-term ecological research projects. We have a lecturer starting in the fall who uh, does bird research and she's really excited to uh, start researching there. And for myself with plants and chip with insects, we're already, we're, we've been, to get up there to start uh, identifying and coming up with really cool long-term studies that we could conduct. In the summer of 2019, so a year from now, um, we want to be offering a lot of those high school programs uh, that we could kind of use as a recruitment tool, but also as a way to empower high school students to want to pursue environmental sciences in general. And then the research will continue. So that by the fall of 2019, we have the rollout, the full rollout of our courses, of our programs, and then also of any programs such as psychology, criminal justice, and any others that we could uh, discuss. Questions about this? Yeah. So the limitation is the septic system, um, and so uh, we're, we are not allowed to have people live up there full time, but if we wanted to conduct, let's say, two week workshops or conferences, that's no problem. So the dorms are available for those. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's perfect for that. Yeah. I think that would be awesome. Um, I think it would be great. We need to just make sure that not all of the dorms are being used. So it's 24 dorms, so again, it's just heavy use. And then we'll have to talk with the, um, once everything is up and running, about like extensive use. I've heard two weeks is no problem at all. Um, and if it's like a few people, like I was thinking it for it as an REU site, if it's an REU site, that's six to eight people, right? So it's not an extensive use. Yeah, uh, so that's a good question. Um, we, it, it is possible to, uh, but you have to get clearance from the people who are working. So we needed hard hats in order to access the site, and we needed to be with the contractor. Yeah, so again, same thing, just because it's an active construction site. Like, there are trucks everywhere. Yep, yeah. Yes. It is. So actually, I'll go back up there for a second. Um, there is a door 
on the back side, if you could kind of see like there on the top floor. So there's actually an elevator that goes up to that, um, to that room, and then they could take it on the other way. Everything is supposed to be ADA accessible. Yeah. Yeah. It holds 24. Yeah. You know, that, again, yeah, so I actually don't know the answer to that. Yeah, so I, I, you know, they just said 24 dorms. Does anyone know? 60? Thank you, George. 60. Holds 60. 60. 60 beds. Six zero. That's what George says. Yep. Okay, so it is a campus where daily people are coming and going. It's not a septic problem, it's a septic limitation. So in other words, I believe that we, this will not be a problem until we are long gone. It's just limited capacity use. So, um, so, and it's also very regulated by the Highlands Commission. So um, the, the people who are working as the contractors there said it's not really going to be an issue if it's maintained at about you know, 500 people. And again, it's supposed to be a campus where students come and go and could take all of their classes there for their third and fourth years. Yeah. And could also do residential summer programs there if they're interested. Okay, I'm going back down to where we were. Um, and so, okay, and then the other exciting uses. Um, so in addition to the classes and the programs that we want to be offering there, um, you and your own programs could be looking at it as an opportunity to do summer workshops. So this could include wording, working like on art or writer's workshops, um, high school programs for your own students. Uh, one of the cool things that we're thinking of doing is professional certification programs. And you can imagine in the world of environmental science, there's a lot of certifications. Um, and so uh, that would be a really great place to do the certification programs. Um, and uh, uh, Jim Dryley, right there you are, it's hard to see, was actually talking about it also being used as um, a place to, uh, that police could even practice their work or search and rescue could practice their work. So uh, it's, it's a really good playground for everybody in that sense. Um, the other thing is that I've already gotten requests from people who are scientists in the area to see if they could stay there, um, which the answer this summer is no, but in the future, of course. So there's a lot of great research being done in the forests of that area, and so we want to kind of have it as a residential uh, opportunity for people who are conducting research. Fran. Wow, recreation-wise, that would be awesome. Um, I'm sure there's insurance issues that we're going to have to deal with, but wouldn't that be amazing? Y yeah. I know that we can't increase, uh, but the ropes course wouldn't be impervious surface, but I'm kind of curious to see what the restrictions on that would be. Anyone from legal here? We'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, outdoor rec possibilities are massive, as state park employee training would be amazing there as well. Um, and again, this is sort of set up to be multi-use, right? So as many uses as we could find, the, best, the better it would be. So, you should hopefully be thinking about how we can make this happen. Um, so this is where I'm going to leave it to more of a discussion. Uh, so some ideas that w or things that I'd love to hear are what are the ideas that you have? And we've kind of been talking about them a little bit. But also what partnerships can we create? So here we're very used to kind of working in our own schools, our own programs. And I really feel like having 
uh, access to the highlands would be a really great opportunity for a lot of these programs to overlap. And so if there are ways that we could overlap our programs or you guys could overlap amongst yourselves. Um, and also it's a terrific uh, avenue for applying for grants. Uh, so I mentioned the REU, that's a research experiences for undergraduates grant um, through the National Science Foundation. And they look exactly for this. They look for immersive field site experience or where students could kind of stay and do research um, in, for an entire summer. And so this is a great place for that, but it could be a great place for the grants that you would typically go after as well. Um, and what would you like to see offered here that we haven't discussed? And so kind of coming with that. Yeah, Janine. biggest things is trying to get the community engagement as well. So offering opportunities for the community to kind of feel a part of this would be a great thing. So we don't have a theater, something like this size, but we, but it is, um, it does have its, that beautiful multi-purpose room, which would be, but again, it's limited to about 54. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, intimate, mm-hmm, beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely inspiring to be there. So it would inspire all sorts of creations, right? So, um, so yeah, that would be terrific. Uh, there's something called Rutgers Cooperative Extension where they go out to places and they will do a lot of those courses like soil conservation. We're hoping that eventually we'll be able to do similar classes, either offering them ourselves, right, so that we have a lot of great expertise in our own um, program, um, or we could also partner with people who are certified to give those, to offer certification. So um, again, it offers a facility and a, a place of study that's uh, in an area that doesn't have a lot of those. So um, I'm excited to kind of have that as an opportunity as a outdoor classroom for a lot of those certifications. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is, um, is, so who's going to maintain security, I guess, there? Um, so I've never seen a park ranger there, a state park ranger there. I don't think that they have a lot of state park rangers wandering the trails. Um, I believe that falls on us. And so that would have to be something that we take, that we hire for, especially for our facilities. Yeah. Great question. Um, I'm, I heard food, so I'm going to go off of the food for a second. Um, so when this was a monastery, there was a massive commercial kitchen, and it was beautiful. Uh, but that said, it's not part of the renovation, um, because the, the idea is that, event that eventually we'll have to see what the use is here, um, to see whether or not we supply food. Um, so one limitation is going to be the fact that 
there's going to be food, but only through vending machines at first. Um, so we're going to have sandwich dispensers and sort of those types of food access, but we will not have an operational kitchen on campus. That said, there are restaurants just within like a five to ten minute drive of uh, that are kind of you know open all the time. So um, other than that, yes, I could teach a wild foraging class there. <laughs> Yeah. So actually the question, I just realized right now I could take this with me. Um, so yeah, so the question was uh, about uh, having a guidance counselor retreat there, right? So, can, so Monmouth County has one where 400 guidance counselors will go and that seems like a perfect use of the site where we could have uh, the guidance counselors go there and sort of learn about Kane, not only that campus but also the main campus and use it as a facility to, that'd be great, that's perfect. Thank you. And I know you will be working with the 13th Honorable Efforts on uh, SDGs, UN SDGs. And uh, I think we could do the uh, health events and conference here for a uh, world summit with SDG 16. Uh, probably uh, you may use that location for partners with UNDP, probably UNDP environment programs. I mean, you can develop a partners with the UN, it would be really great for our That's a great idea. Great idea. We should totally go after that. So um, we had a Sustainable Development Goals uh, forum, forum here uh, last year, or in the spring, uh, for, to discuss the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And um, we had someone from the UN come, and I feel like that would be great to, get, to kind of access and roll out the Sustainable Development Goals there. Um, this is, so talking about sustainability, the building itself is supposed to be, it's, um, again, very heavily regulated in terms of its energy use and in terms of its water use, because, water efficiency because of this Highlands regulation. So that part's really exciting as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. We will be offering a thousand botany courses. Yeah, so, um, and there's actually extensive botany research out there too. Um, so uh, there's a professor from Raritan Valley that's been doing long-term um, botanical research out there, and so we've been partnering to kind of get it extended into our area. So, yeah, definitely there will be field classes. That's what we're looking forward to the most, or me, in my biased opinion. Yeah. No, please. Fresh water. Ah, oh, see, this is fantastic. That's totally great. Okay, cool. Yeah, we should connect with them and have that sort of exchange. Because even within our tiny state, it's amazing how much diversity of our, of our water and of our land there is. So that's, ex that's, yeah. Oh, fun. Really cool. Good. Well, we have to reach out more to Mammoth then cause, because of everything that's going on there. And it's, it's great that at, as Kane, we'll have, we have the ocean and we have the highlands. So kind of seeing that connection would be huge. Any other questions or suggestions? Yeah. So it's a great question, and um, we need to discuss that to see what we roll out. And a lot of it is dependent on how many, um, how many full-time faculty we could have out there. Um, and also, the, we want to make sure that we have enough feeders, feeders from those four community colleges of students that would go into the third and fourth years there. So it's an, we have to do sort of a connection and articulation with those community colleges and determine based on student needs. Yeah. 
Um, great question. Um, we are all working as a committee, right? <laughs> so you can, you can reach out to me and we'll send it to the committee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? So it's exciting. I really hope that this is kind of the beginning, but um, I'm hoping that you all could think of ways that we could connect our programs and that we could make sure that this area works as a true satellite campus for us so that, um, so that we could really integrate our different programs out there. In all right, well, um, my, again, my name is Daniela Shevitz. So if you have any questions or ideas afterwards, please email me at dshevitz at And um, yeah, I look forward to working with you guys. Thank you.